Hey guys, Brian Collada here with Train by Tex. I wanted to uh, show you a brief demo of uh, Snap-on's ShopStream Connect. Uh, ShopStream Connect is a, a software that Snap-on has to allow you to review previously recorded uh, scanner and uh, scope files. Uh, anything that you save on your tool can be transferred to uh, this software to be reviewed on a PC. And for instance, if you make a recording on your Solus, you can transfer that file onto a PC and uh, review it at a different time and also uh, share those files with your peers if, uh, for instance, you were looking for help uh, with uh, the uh, trying to uh, diagnose a car and you wanted your uh, your friend's opinion, uh, ShopStream Connect allows you to do that. Uh, I wanted to show you a way that I use ShopStream Connect that makes it a little bit easier because, in my opinion, the main screen of the software is sort of difficult to navigate to find files and with the uh, aid of uh, the tip that I'm about to give you guys I think it'll make it a little bit easier for you guys to help you open files so thanks for watching alright so we're going to begin by uh, showing you how to get the software from um, Snap-on's website uh, you can uh, load up your browser and the easiest way I uh, find the software is just sim simply type in ShopStream Connect into the Google search bar. The uh, first link that pops up is the software. There's a brief video in this uh, first web page that pops up that uh, briefly demonstrates the software as well that you guys can review. But I'm going to show a couple things that I learned with ShopStream that can make the whole experience a lot easier. Uh, you're going to click right here on Download ShopStream. And it's going to ask you to enter some basic information. Uh, at the bottom here where it says um, Snap-on Diagnostic Tool, just enter the tool that you have. And then that's all you have to enter you don't have to worry about having the serial number or the uh, the version of, of the software that you have that's not important to uh, start the process of the, of the download once you enter all your information here click submit and then the, the download will begin uh, once once that file is downloaded go ahead and install the software Pretty, pretty straightforward. All right, once you have the software installed, it'll be right here, okay? And when you open it, it'll look something like this. And this is kind of difficult to grasp. Um, for for instance, say you had a file, which I do, I'll show you real quick. I have, I have these, these three files right here, and they're, one of them is a uh, VSM file, or two of them are VSM files, and one of them is a scanner PID file. VSM is a, uh, a scope file, some of the uh, scope movie file, so it's it's the whole scope file. Um, back to this screen, if I wanted to access that file, you would have to go, you know, as easy as it being on the desktop this software doesn't allow you to easily do that. You would have to click on users, you'd have to click on the user that that file is saved on, which is Brian, and then you'd have to click on desktop, and then you'd have to actually click on desktop, and then here are the files that can work with the software. And then you would have to load one of these files. I'm going to click on this one right here this is a scope file. Okay, that is to me pretty difficult to do. There are easier ways to use the software that I know. Um, if you were to connect your 
so your your solace to the PC. If you go through the tools menu within the solace, you can connect your solace directly to a PC with a USB wire, and then the solace will appear in this file list. And you'll be able to access all of, all of the files that you've saved, and that includes code scans, it includes um, scope files, screenshots, anything that's on that uh, scan tool will be in that folder, and it, it will appear in here as soon as you go and connect that tool via USB, and then go in the tool and turn the PC Connect on that will appear in this list here. What I'm going to show you right now is a way to access files that are already on your PC in a much much easier method. And I'm going to do that by going in your program files which is going to be a folder like you know if you go to this is Windows 10 and if you just type in this PC you'll come up with my, commu my computer basically. Uh, click on your C drive and then if you click on program, program files times 86, x86 you will find in here Snap-on. Once you find Snap-on click on Shopstream Connect and then if you, you'll see in here there is a scanner data viewer and a scope data viewer folder. I'm going to click on scanner data scanner data view, uh, viewer and then click on US and then in here is a software for viewing scanner data scanner data. If you right click and click uh, create shortcut it'll put a shortcut in the same folder and then what you can do is click and drag this software this shortcut to your desktop once that's on your desktop you can go ahead and rename this and I'm going to name this scanner viewer okay now I have a scanner viewer program that's on my desktop. Okay, I'm going to go back into that folder, click on back again, back again, and now I'm going to go into scope data viewer, find the scope data viewer file, which is this icon that's in red, and then again, create shortcut, that will pop up in this, in this fo uh, folder again, drag that shortcut to your desktop, and then we're going to we're going to label this scope viewer. Okay. Now we have two pieces of software on our desktop. Now, if you want to access a file that was previously that's previously on your on your PC, say a a buddy on Facebook or something sent you a file and you wanted to review it with him, and discuss what you both saw and you know work together with each other to help you uh, diagnose this car say he sends you a scanner file all you have to do is you know, email it or, or you know, what have you and then click on your scanner viewer software button here that you just created and now this software pops up and it's a lot easier to navigate to find files now I can just simply click on desktop and find that, that file that I had, which will be 2, and it's labeled 2, and then click open. And then now I have a scanner file in here. And to go over this portion of the software, um, I can show you quickly how to change this around a little bit. Up here at the top, you have all of the different options for the amount of PIDs that you want to graph at the same time. You can do one, you know, two, four, four in a cube, six, six in a cube, eight, and then twelve, and then sixteen. Um, if you want to choose different um, PIDs to review, you know, if it, say I want to have this uh, ABS on PID, 
this ABS on pin needs to be dragged up here into this portion of the chart here for it to be in the graft for it to be a graph data. If you want to customize this list to only include what you want, all you have to do is click custom list here and then edit list and it looks just like it would in the scan tool. Uh, you can you know deselect everything and then say you only want these four PIDs. I can click those four PIDs, click save and exit in the top left here and now I only have four PIDs displayed on my screen. If you want to graph only four, you can click graph four. You can graph the four that way or this way. And then what you can also do is hide this menu. Once you get that graph on there, you can go ahead and hide this menu real easy by clicking the hide button right here. And that'll give you full screen uh, view of the PIDs that you selected. It's pretty cool. And then if you want to reshow that uh, list of PIDs, let's go ahead and click show again and they'll populate again. And then it say, say I wanted to get 16 PIDs. I wanted these 16. Go ahead and click save and exit and then again click on your 16 and then bam you have all 16 of those PIDs <clears throat> graphed simultaneously on one screen and you can review the file you know and also you can in my opinion the cursors are a little easier to use <clears throat> in this software than the cursors that are on the tool itself you know say I wanted to see exactly when I hit 76 miles per hour right here you know what was happening to my brake switch you know whatever <laughs> that cursor is going to change on all of your graphs and is a, to me a lot easier to use on this software than it is in the tool. Um, one thing I'm going to encourage is to use the software more frequently than you would while say trying to drive the car and review 16 PIDs at once while staring at a screen and there's traffic around you. you you know how that goes where you can't concentrate on the road and you end up crashing I'm going to try to encourage you to make your recording save your recording send it to a laptop or something where you can review this file and you know sit down have a cup of coffee and see what's going on you, know, you, you can really analyze a little bit better in my opinion when you can sit down on a nice screen and, and see what's going on and that's you know, again that's my personal preference but what I'm trying to get at is you know this is a much easier way for you to uh, capture and then review a file rather than trying to do it while driving okay I'm going to show you now the scope uh, software this is the shop this is the scanner viewer file or scanner viewer software and now I'm going to show you the scope file folder or software sorry uh, again up here is where I made the shortcut to the software you can click on scope viewer and then again simply one mouse click pull up desktop and go ahead and find that find that file that you have which is right here I labeled it number one click OK go ahead and maximize that <clears throat> and now we have a cam crank correlation type uh, pattern here um, if you click on the zoom button in the corner here you can zoom all the way out to see the full buffer of the recording that you previously captured and then you can drag this cursor right here and this cursor is the point of zoom if I want to zoom in, see these little black lines in the middle of this yellow blob? And if I wanted to zoom in on that to see what that is, I can go ahead and do that. And you may want to do it in steps. And then you work your way closer. And well, that little, turns out that little black line was nothing but a uh, 
missing tooth in the, in the crank signal. But you know, you get the point where if you saw something all the way zoomed out here, you can go ahead and use this cursor to help you figure out where you want to zoom, you know, where you want to narrow down your zoom at. So I can go all the way to number one, and now I'm zoomed in all the way at uh, the recording that this was at, which is probably 20 millis yeah, 20 milliseconds on this entire screen from you know start to finish. There's 20 milliseconds on this screen. Uh, another thing you can do in here, if you click this button here, you can turn channels on and off. You know, if I only want to see this uh, yellow crank signal. I can, you know, turn it on, turn that on only if I want to see all three or all four uh, waveforms at once. I can see them all. Then you can use this uh, scrolling thing at the bottom here and, and scroll over the data. You know, you can go through it as you uh, as you as you wish. Um, at the top here, there's a couple setup things where you can set up, uh, you know, like like your cursors here. You can turn your cursors on. You click on the show button, and then now I have now I have these cursors where I can make, you know, measures yeah, excuse me, measurements with. <clears throat> Those measurements will appear here at the bottom. As you move the cursors, the measurements change. And then, if you wanted to play the capture, you can click play in the corner, and it will it'll play as if you were, you know, scoping. And it's going to do it in the zoom that you're in. So if I if I was if I was uh, zoomed all the way in at, at one, you know, the, the screen or the the capture is going to be zooming across. You know, but if I'm kind of zoomed out. You know, it's going to look a little bit slower. So, that's all I really have today. Um, I, I, if you have any uh, questions or comments, uh, please uh, please leave them in the in the notes. And uh, again, thanks for watching.